What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate y'all. As always, this is a series, maybe, of what I'm going to do. So this is like part one of maybe four parts. Um, this is a clip from my live that I did for my Patreon folks last Friday. It's a little lengthy, but there's a lot of stuff that's packed in there. I think you will get something from it. Check it out. Leave some comments, let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna be quiet and we're just going to look at this video. All right, so um, on the side here, I actually started a little bit of the design work just so um, we can get past this because this can be rather tedious at times, but that's all in the process of, you know, doing graffiti or doing any type of extra uh, bells and whistles to um, when you're weathering something or adding something to it. Um, again, I hope y'all can hear me clear. I'm not sure where I would see comments. Um, again, it's my first time doing it, so y'all work with me, I'm gonna work with y'all. So my, my lovely assistant, my, my three day old wife, four day old, <laughs> so we just got married Monday and, ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we on YouTube, doubt, you know what I'm saying? And she is going to be helping me with a little bit of moderation here and there and all that stuff like that. So, uh, um, uh, we're going to keep going. Uh, so here, I did just a little bit, again, of some design work. And it's not a lot, but I wanted just something so I could show y'all how I go about my process and all that. Um, I feel like that design flows because it's kind of big at this end and it gets small. Just what's going through my brain. Um, and so next I'll hit it with these um, Posca. <laughs> if I'm saying that wrong, somebody let me know. Huh? What up, Jeffrey? She says, shout out, Jeffrey. <laughs> what up? Is that Purdue? Yes. Jeff yeah, yeah. He's been rocking with me for a minute. I appreciate you, Jeff, for hanging out, man. Um, and so I'm gonna just take my blue and I'm gonna go over these lines uh, just a tad bit and then I'm gonna bust out. Um, it's gotta be Steve. What? Uh oh. <laughs> and then I got some micron pins that I'm gonna use also to outline it. Again, this is more tedious part than anything, but got to be done y'all and if you got any questions I am here for everything and so what I'm doing also um, you got the markers and you know the charts and all that stuff on these cars to be honest most graffiti artists will attempt to stay away from those um, because they don't want their graffiti to get erased or taken off of there. And that's what mainly the train companies, when they take off graffiti, they're just really making sure that those markers and charts and stuff can still be seen. Because um, they're obviously important, but you know, some of them, they have like barcodes where they gotta scan stuff when they go into the next stop and different weights and all that stuff so um don't ask me how i know what graffiti artists do i may have or may not have <laughs> tagged a few cars back in my day so respectfully they try and and it's just for the graffiti artist um ego <laughs> But I'm just going to follow these lines that I put on here already. 
Um, also, when you're doing any type of weathering or something like that, um, get reference. Um, most of you know, and those that don't know, I'm an artist at heart. That's what I do during the day. I'm a tattoo artist. Um, I'm an animator. All sorts of things art related. And even in that space, um, I would always tell people to get reference. If you're drawing a body, if you're drawing a car, whatever you're doing, get some reference. Uh, it's the same for this stuff here too. One, it's just taking out the guesswork. You don't have to wonder where something is supposed to go. Uh, <laughs> because nature has already provided you with the answer. I've seen a lot of people doing weathering and I'm never one to crush someone's pipe dream. But it would go a lot better and a lot smoother because people get frustrated because they can't weather like they see whatever the reference or whatever they think it should look like. Um, if they would just take time to get that little bit of reference and practice. I mean, heck, I messed up a lot of cars. And yes, these train cars are expensive, but what you could do is if you go to like your local uh, train store, nine times out of 10, they got like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a used section or someone is trying to get rid of some trains or something. And some of those trains are like the box cars might be two bucks. So grab you a cheap box car and uh, practice. <laughs> You can go eat. I know you're hungry. <laughs> I need she, to come. She just came back with food. Maybe I can come back then. All right. <laughs> but yes, practice, practice, practice. Um, hopefully, can y'all see that? What I'm doing? And I'm gonna try my best not to rush through this either. Um, so if I, you know, I only wanna stay an hour um, just to get my feet wet and to see uh, the engagement. And you know, obviously I'm testing to see if this is something you guys would wanna see. Um, Cause I used to go live. So I have another YouTube channel called The Mad Penciler and I would go live every week on Tuesdays, I think it was, and um, just teach people how to draw, talk about art. So I kind of want to mimic some of that here, but just with trains and just other models and stuff like that. So um, I do appreciate y'all hanging out this evening, though. It's Friday, payday. I'm sure you had something else to do. But yes, practice. Practice, practice, and more practice. That That's the, you know, we live in this little society now where it's all, you know, social media famous. And again, I'm an artist at heart. And my other account, it, it's pretty big, so... But I never take it for granted or like think I'm some hot shot or anything. Um, I draw a lot, like a lot. I mess with trains a lot. And it's just practice over and over and over. I can't stress that enough. But now I'm just adding a few little um, doodads and little diamonds here and there. 
uh, the one thing I like about these paint pens is that uh, they dry really quick so we won't have to be sitting here like wait eh, waiting for paint to dry um, because it dry this is probably dry over here already but I'm gonna go over a few of these just a little bit and then I'll outline them like I said and, and with these uh, I got them over here off to the side some um, microns and they're just uh, li art lining pens all the stuff I'm using you can find it in my uh, Amazon store uh, if you search pro scale models there too you'll be able to find all this stuff um, as I always say too there's more than one way to skin a cat and uh, if you got a different way man by all means let me know I, I'm really interested in hearing what you know other people's um, experiences with certain things and um, I'm always wanting to learn something you know um, learn new things experience new things um, all right while that's drying I'm gonna go over and show you these um, microns real quick and they are just you know black most of these are Indian ink um, India ink I'm sorry and they're different tip sizes let me um so I can see make sure I'm doing stuff right here cool cool alright so these um, microns come in different sizes I don't know if y'all can see that like I want you to uh, let me see if I can flip a camera here real quick see if I get fancy on y'all I don't think that's any better but there's some numbers on the tip here let's see if I come in that's too much if I come back out can't see that either anyway we'll go back to the top view so there's numbers on the top here and those numbers dictate the size of the tip of the little pin right um, they also have the number here and I got a bunch of these so I, I just depending on you know the the size of the piece of artwork that I'm doing on a train uh, or whatever honestly determines what size I grab um, so I'm going to probably try and start with this number two first and then I'm going to see what that gets me and so it's like zero one zero two zero three blah 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 the higher that number the fatter the tip and vice versa I think it some of them go down to like point zero zero five and that's really thin so all right I'm gonna get my uh, magnifying glasses on here and I'm gonna flip this a little bit this way because um, the piping and all that stuff is, I don't want it to get in the way and I don't want to break it. Um, I'm gonna try my best not to break anything. Um, let's see what we get here. Ah, those, I don't need those. And this is really what takes a lot of time is the outlining and making sure things are done right. Um, and that's kind of what I do. I get in my little zone and I'm up hours and hours and hours.
So, how did I get into model training, you ask? Well, then I'll tell you. So, one, I've always been into model trains, um, or just trains in general. I think, you know, most little kids like looking at uh, big machinery and stuff like that, right? Um, and then, you know, at some point, people grow out of certain things or whatever, but I've always loved trains. Um, I like going to go rail fan and look at trains. I like chasing trains, um, riding trains, everything train, right? And when I was in Texas, I was in the military, so when I was in Texas, I bought my first engine and it was a Pennsylvania Railroad uh, a PR. I found a, uh, a train club and man I was in heaven. Never ran that train once um, but I bought it thinking I was going to build this layout and this was oof, <laughs> many many moons ago and Fast forward to maybe a year or two before COVID, uh, me and my wife, she was my fiance then, but we went to um, Helen. Helen is a, a town here in Georgia. So Helen is like a, a German town. And they had, uh, my little markers ain't working. Um, they had a layout up, up in uh, one of the buildings or something but it was really cool. And I was like, you know what? I want to do a layout. I want to do my layout like I had always planned. So I came home, we got back, and I, was, I, I did some research and I seen um, these guys who had very little space put a train set. That's for you, Steve, a train set. Um, they put a layout on the door. I had every intention on going to Home Depot and buying a hollow core door. Right before that, I went and took the trash out and there was a door in the dumpster. And I was like, yo, it's a sign. I got the door, brought it upstairs. She was like, what you doing with that? <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm going to build a layout. And that's how it started. And here I am today, starting a whole new huge layout from that one door. <laughs> that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, and I have my airbrush out, so um, once I'm done with this, um, we'll definitely switch cameras and I'll, I'll hit this with a little bit of um, fade the color a little bit and then uh, I think I'm going to spray paint some rust on top. Just a, a dusting, like nothing real uh, heavy. Man, my little pens ain't doing nothing today. It's not a good look, bruh. There we go. So we are in um, Halloween season, spooky time. And it has by far become my favorite time of the year. Um, I mean, I like all holiday type uh, things, but Halloween has to be one of my favorites. I love horror movies, um, and I'm more of a slasher type of dude, 
So anything with like Friday the Thirteenth, Jason, uh, Freddy, all the classics, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, for our our wedding photos, we actually dressed up. Um, I, I had a Michael Myers costume, um, and she had a a mask as well. Yeah, I guess our parents think there's something wrong with us, but they'll be all right. I blame my mom anyway. She introduced me to all that. All right, yeah, yeah, now we cooking with Crisco. Um, and yeah, I'll just keep doing, you know, outlining this, turning the tank car whatever way I need to. I will say when I'm using these um, microns and I go over the actual paint, um, that tends to cause them to act a little funny. And just meaning they, they, the, the ink starts not flowing properly because I guess what's happening is um, I'm gunking up the actual uh, fibers that are in the tip there. It's not giving a, uh, a smooth flow of ink. So when that happens, what I typically do is I have a uh, just a regular sheet of paper off to the side um, to where I could uh, just scratch on it and get that ink flowing back to normal again. And also I'm trying to uh, get these lines. Oh. You son of a gun. Y'all see that? I don't know if you can see how it uh, messed that ink up right there. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Because a couple things. One, shit happened. And two, um, I was going to distress a little bit of the graffiti anyway. Because I... Um, you know, if you look back at some of my other uh, posts or whatever where I've done graffiti on cars and stuff, they're either dusted over or, you know, chipped away a little bit. Because um, I don't want the graffiti to be new, if if that makes sense. And, and yes, you know, it obviously had to have been new for, you know, a little while. But um, on my layout, I prefer it not to be new. So... With that being said, I don't mind that little mishap there. Um, to me, it just adds flavor. A little seasoning. A little flavor. And we got us a winner. Now, also, and this is where I need to practice more too. So when I use my airbrush, I'm usually just dusting, right? I'm not actually quote unquote drawing with it. It's more just a quick dust, get in, get out. I would like to practice a little more with it so I can because I'd like to, you know, make the graffiti when I tag it actually look like it came out of a spray paint can. Um, 
And there's a few things that have to happen when you do stuff like that too. Like you have to uh, get a smaller uh, needle. You got to get a smaller nozzle. Um, one because, you know, the scale of trains is uh, it is hella small, right? So you got to get something that can actually handle the scale of what you're trying to do. Um, but I think I want to practice that. And yes, they have uh, stickers too, right? Uh, water, water decal, water slides of graffiti. Um, just me personally, and it's just you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just one. I'm I'm an artist, and I want to do it myself. That's the main thing. Um, two. Now I can put whatever I want on there. So like if I'm doing something, you know, a custom piece for someone or something like that, you know, I have that freedom now of being able to do whatever I want to do. Now what you could do is if like, you know, trying to figure this stuff out is a little, um, and I ain't gonna say figure it out, but you don't really wanna just take the time to do this part of it, right? What you could do is buy your own water slide paper. You know, graffiti or draw or do whatever you wanna do digitally and then turn around and just print it out on the water slide paper. I've done that with, um, I, I did a, uh, a mailbox, like, and these were bigger scale, right? But I did that with a mailbox and an ice machine, an ice vending machine. Uh, the little logo, Ready Ice. So I didn't want to redraw that. Um, I just downloaded the paper, or the logo from the internet, um, cleaned it up a bit, and I just, bought some of that water slide paper and it, it worked actually pretty well a lot better than what i anticipated um so that's always an option too if you just you know don't want to or you can't you don't have the time whatever the case is there, there's always a workaround I think for me, I just like hand-drawn stuff anyway. Um, it's just a different feel to that art. All right, so I'm almost done with this here. And then I'll just go back and make sure stuff is cleaned up, you know, because um, once I put that that coat of dust on here, um, I won't say there is no going back, but uh, it, it's a hard road to go back once you've um, started doing layers and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that this is 99.8% what you want it to be. Like I said, you can go back, but it's gonna be a rough road, rough road. But yeah, we cooking with Crisco now, y'all. And again, even before I did this, I prepped this tank car with clear coat. 
Now there's several types of clear coat out there. Um, you can get whatever one you choose, but for me, they both work the same. So the ones in mind that I'm thinking about are, you know, you can go to Home Depot and get some regular clear coat and they spray paint the rattle can section, right? It's a little cheaper than the uh, actual kind that they sell at the train store. And I am drawing a blank right now. What is that called? Um, it would, it's, it's also a clear coat. I cannot think of what it's called right now. But um, to me, and this is just me, I, you, you can have your own opinions, but... I feel like they just the same and you get more in the one from you know Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever you decide you want to get that stuff from but I'm saying all that to say I hit the tank car and I'll, I'll anything that I'm weathering um, as far as rolling stock engines and stuff like that I'll hit it with a uh, clear coat because if I didn't, these markers would not stick to the um, to the tank, to the surface. Um, the surface is super, super shiny, super smooth, um, and it's it's because it's plastic, right? There, there's no like it's not a bad thing or anything. It's just that stuff won't stick, so. Hit everything with a nice coat. And uh, I think you'll be good. And honestly, I think we are good. I'm happy with that. Let's turn this around. Yeah, that'll work for me. And so that's what I was saying here. You know, I, um, I kept this chart. I think it has something to do with like the weight and what's in here and how much of whatever is in there is you know bad for you and all that stuff I'm sure I, I don't know exactly what it is but they don't put stuff on train cars just to put them on there so let's just say it's important yeah and actually that's not bad I like the I don't know if that's showing up on camera good, but the little, um, like I said, the quote unquote happy accident, my Bob Ross. And so now, after I'm done with like the main thing of what I'm thinking I wanna do, then I'll just go in and start adding other uh, details and stuff like that. Just just to spruce it up just a little bit. Flip it over a little bit. And I think this is all I want to put on this car. Like, I don't want to... I don't know, on the other side I might tag it. I don't know. Probably not. I think I'm happy with what I got here. And so yeah, I think that I think that'll work for me. Y'all let me know what you think. And that's it, y'all. Part one, just some tagging and how I go about putting graphics on a tank car. Like I said, this will be, I don't know, maybe four parts, maybe a little longer. Um, the lives are allowing me to chop them up and use them for YouTube and for all the other social media. So again, that was my Patreon live I did last Friday. So if you wanna become a Patreon and ask me anything you want, 
during a live session and get a live answer back, the link will be below. You can sign up. I thank my Patreons, the ones that showed up and the ones that couldn't show up. I know we're busy. Thank you for all the support. Again, if you want to support and become a Patreon, click the link below and boom, you'll be supporting me. I think that's it. I will see y'all next time. And the next story for Evil Bones. You can see the house back there. Yo, the next story, I'm telling you, y'all need to, actually, I'm gonna just put it in one of these corners. Check out the first episode and get ready for that next one. Now I'm done. Peace.